Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name's Steve, and if you're new to this channel, these videos are all about digging deeper on the cost of ownership. Currently, that is my Porsche 992 Carrera 2. And in today's video, I'm gonna have a run through owning a Carrera 2 in PDK without the Sports Chrono. So what I'll do is we'll get in the car, we'll run through the actual PDK setup, I'll show you the dash without the stopwatch on, and we will go a little bit through the PCM settings as well as where the buttons are located for the sport and wet mode. There you go, there was a quick setup of the boot system. I've got it already set so that we can see this PCM screen to start with. The car itself, it comes with just the now PDK selector and buttons. The old 991 and also the 718 came in the still in production has the handle and you've also got the ability to move it over to the left with the short shift up and down instead of using just the paddles on the steering wheel. And on the tab we've got reverse neutral and drive we've got park on the button which is illuminated with the red led when it's active and also the manual override for constant manual which also comes up led when you select it when we come into the pcm settings what you've got is if you go to the car in the selection here you've got the ability to change the drive modes here also on my car with it only being the c2 and a lack of options i have probably different buttons to some other models but I have my wet and sport mode here I have seen different ones where you do have extra favorite buttons for example and some of the other buttons are moved around and part of the sport settings is all the time you can also select the change between normal chassis and sports mode and you can press it into sports and you can see it highlights there on the suspension it's all the chassis stiffening etc you can turn that on and off whether you're in sports or normal on top of the dash there, you can see I have totally flat, clean area there where there would be a stopwatch if we did have a sports chrono. You can see what that looks like from sort of a wider distance. I also am missing the knob that would be right here if we did have the sports chrono pack. With inside the rev counter, you can see there that we have the miles per hour at the bottom and also you have the selector for your drive. When you're actually driving along, you will also get the gear number down here as well so if we start the car up should get all the lights going out once that's happened there we'll go so we're still in park if i put my foot down and i put it into drive there you can see the first selected gear comes up there and it always shows you which one that you're in if you move it into manual you can see that by pressing the button it also brings on the red manual light to tell you that you're in manual select there where you have to use either the down or the up panels on either side of the wheel. There's two reasons why I didn't order the sports chrono in this car, and that's because one, I just dislike the sports clock that's on the dash. I just like that nice, clean, flat dash that we've got. And the second reason is I really don't need all those drive modes what I'm using the car for. I've bought the car to use every day. I'm not gonna go track racing with it. I'm not gonna do any sort of high performance driving with this car. So having already driven the 718 came and having the ability of a sport button and also having the paddle shift on the pdk i was aware of what the car drove like i was aware of putting the sports button on would give me that extra performance when i wanted it when i wanted to have some fun and i knew that when i really just wanted to kick down a couple of flaps down on the minus paddle on the left hand side would give me that rev boost that i needed in a drop down a gear just as instantaneously as possibly pressing that pursuit button that's on the stalk from my point of view that was my reasonings for it i'm not saying you shouldn't get it if you're going to order the car a lot of people do get it and they use all the modes and i can understand why it just personally wasn't for me so don't be put off by me saying that if you really want to have it added to your car. The main reason for me doing this video then wasn't just to explain the very basic PDK setup that you've probably seen umpteen times before on different videos. It was more to tell you and show you roughly how I would drive the car using just the PDK and possibly the sports button when I want to. There's some foibles about this PDK driving setup where it's always trying to kick up into the highest gear and it sometimes takes away some of your performance ability when you're in normal driving mode. And I know why they're doing that because they're trying to squeeze as much MPG out of the car as possible for the performance figures. If you pop it into sports mode, you've always got the higher revs that's there to give you the performance and it holds it in gear longer so you get that faster, more responsive car. 
depends which one mode you want to drive in. I've not actually tried driving this car in sports mode all the time to see what MPG I'm getting, but that might be something I do in the future so that I can give an update against my normal MPG I've shown in other videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera up, point at the rev counter so you can see what the display is doing as I'm driving along. And I'm just going to go through a couple of things about driving in each mode. I'm going to go in sports and auto and just show you the differences so you can see the revs. And I'm also going to just point out a couple of things that I have learned about the car that you might not know or if you're about to buy the car you might want to pick up on before you start driving it. So to start with I am just going to go in normal auto mode and we're just going to pull straight into drive and I'm just going to drive off gently and show you what the normal gear changeover is like. So. As you can see, at every opportunity, the car is trying its best to move into a higher gear. We haven't come to a complete stop there and it doesn't drop down into first, it just stays in second. And that is something that I've come to notice about the car, that if you're just in normal driving mode, that when you actually come to a junction and you want to stop and you slow down like I'm doing now, and you come to the edge and say you come to a dead stop, you do need to wait nearly until it hits one or zero to move into first gear. So you do lose a bit of power. If you're not coming away in first gear, you're gonna get a little bit of a slow pull away. So really my solution to that is that obviously if I'm coming to a near dead stop and I'm trying to gauge a gap and I come down and I'm getting there, I'll just pull the left hand, gets me into first, I can pull away quite quickly and I can move straight back into second and third using the right hand one. And then after a few seconds, it will just drop back out from manual straight back into drive of its own accord for me when it realizes I'm no longer playing around with the paddles. As you can see there, it did actually override me when it realized the revs were dropping too quickly and went in a second while it still said manual. So another point about the PDK system, if I let the gears jump up there into the highest one I can and I will show you what it is. Now that we're in fifth, if you stamp down on the accelerator and then release, it will immediately jump down a few gears to give you some immediate performance. So I'll give you an example. If you watch, stamp, accelerate, and it's dropped you down into a lower gear so that you've got some immediate power. That is an option you can take if you want to do it without touching the gears. If I change this, you can see I'm in fifth doing 23 if I press the sports button there I get an immediate jump up from just over a thousand to two thousand revs and I'm locked back into third instead of fifth it's dropped down two gears and I get a little bit of acceleration away there and it'll go very quickly up the gears I can also override it into manual and as you saw there I got a rev match with a blip So also just for reference you can put it into the wet mode and it will go into wet you will notice a difference in the feel of the revs when it changes into that engine mode the same as with the sport although it's not as dramatic i have used it in the wet and the snow i didn't feel it made too much difference to the way that i drive but it is there if you want to use it and i do tend to put it on just to be cautious so there you go that is the standard porsche 992 pdk system with no sports chrono on I've covered all the features I think you probably need to know about. If I've missed anything, feel free to stick it in the comments because it's not just for me, it's also for anybody else that's watching these videos, looking to buy the car or maybe getting one second hand in the future. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.